morning and welcome to worship today. Our service this morning is looking at the compassion of Christ, its meaning, its implications and its effects. But first, let us pause for a moment to prepare for worship. Our call to worship today has a response. If you could refer to the order of worship or the transcript, you will see the responses written there in bold type. Raise your voices in response to God's goodness. We praise you, O Lord, for all the blessings you have given us. Lift your hearts in sweet surrender to God's mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for hearing the prayers of our hearts. God is good. Praise be to God. The love and mercy of God never fails. Amen. We come to our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray together. The glory is yours, God, creator, life breather, giver of such a good creation, full of beauty, sustaining our life. We give thanks to you for our life, our relationships, our loves and our hopes for your image obscured but still visible in humankind. The glory is yours, God, renewer, making all things new. We give thanks to you for the living promise of new Jerusalem, for new heaven and new earth, for relationships recreated, for the broken mended and tears wiped away. The glory is yours, God, in Jesus Christ, crucified and raised. We give thanks to you for new life already begun, for the promise alive and your image made clear, for all that is now being changed by love's victory. Forgive us for the wasted moment spent selfishly or just filling time. For the hurtful moments caused by our words or actions. For the thoughtless moments lacking in love. For the destructive moments when we let our anger rip. For the missed moments, frozen by hesitation and doubt. Help us now and every moment to try to live as Jesus lived, fully present fully human, full of love. And hear these words of assurance. God, we praise you for your love, for the assurance of your forgiveness and the promise of wholeness. Amen. All these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
The reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 9, starting to read at verse 35. And Jesus went out about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, to send out labourers into his harvest. And he called to them his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every infirmity. The names of the twelve disciples are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon from Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve disciples Jesus sent out, charging them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and preach as you go, saying, Thy kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without pay, give without pay. Thanks be to God. Great Compassion In a world of deep desperation, how shall we speak of your great compassion? How shall we reach out to touch your healing cloak? In a world where too many die young, how shall we bring new hope and life? How shall we see each human being with your gracious eyes? In a world drowning in words and ideas, facts and opinions, spin and slander, how shall we show you as the Shepherd King, seeking out the lost, binding up their wounds, carrying them on your shoulders, leading them to safety? Lord, call your people to action, to the hard work of harvesting, the costly business of mending lives, opening eyes, touching wounds, pointing to your kingdom, where the harassed find help, the lost find hope, the sick find love. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, 
Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. I hope you will forgive me if I consider a theme for this time of reflection that focuses mainly on just one verse. It's been an introspective week. I'd like to share my thoughts with you on the verse in the Matthew reading that spoke strongly to me and transfixed me when I read it. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus most certainly drew large crowds because of his teaching, preaching and healing. Anyone who tours the countryside as Jesus was doing and saying all that he did would obviously draw a crowd. But rather than thinking how wonderful it was that all those people were coming in crowds to hear and see him, he stood back and he saw the problems those people coming to see and hear him were experiencing every day. He saw harassed and helpless people. And it made me think of what he did not do. He didn't look at the crowds, the individuals gathering to see and hear him and only think about what they were doing badly or wrong. He didn't show disappointment or, or mock them. No, he looked on them with compassion. He completely focused on those others and cared about them and for them. And it made me stop and think and consider how hard it can be to see situations and people in the world and not bring learned or deeply embedded beliefs and biases to the surface. No matter how open-minded I think I am. If I looked at that crowd of people Jesus looked upon that day, would I even have a chance of seeing them as compassionately as he did? In prayer and reflection this week, I have come to recognise that what has sparked this train of thought is the reaction to the death of George Floyd and seeing the crowds of people protesting in America and in the UK. I've had to pause and wrestle with my feelings, really debate with myself whether stereotypes, hidden biases and dare I say prejudice, have affected my varying responses to the protests by groups that Jesus would certainly have looked at with compassion and recognised that they represent harassed and helpless people in a different time and a different place. How can one verse leap off the page and do that? Perhaps because that is what walking with Jesus does. I do believe the compassion of Jesus is the crucial point of this passage. It is a turning point. In the verse before, Matthew summarised what had been happening. In the one after, he is indicating what is to come. What came before and what is to come all hinges on the compassion of Jesus. It is out of his compassion that Jesus demonstrates the work he expects of his disciples. The point that Matthew is making in this passage is the importance of having a heart of compassion. Compassion is a strange word, isn't it? I think I've confused or misused it at times in the past, thinking of it more as pity, which has quite negative connotations in its daily use these days, 
almost a sentiment that degrades a person, a sense of feeling sorry for people. But these last few weeks, I've come to understand better what real compassion is. Compassion, even the way it sounds as you say it, has a deep sense of emotion, of warmth and feeling that strikes a chord in my heart. To allow yourself to find a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another person or people who are stricken by misfortune as well as a strong desire to support them without judgment. Am I very compassionate when it is convenient or almost impossible not to, to be? Or can I be truly moved to compassion as Christ was moved to compassion? That's challenging for me, potentially for each of us. We're going to join together now to bring our prayers of intercession and concern before God. There is a response, so I invite you when I say, Lord, in you we trust, to respond by saying, we look to you for help. Let us pray. Lord, we bring to you today some of the ordinary, unspectacular things which have been happening around us this week, but which have affected people deeply. We bring to you today all those who have been victims of crime this week and feel angry or afraid. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We bring to you all those who have had major arguments this week and don't know how to get back to safety. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We bring to you today all those who have had bad news this week and don't know how they will cope. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We bring to you today all those who have tried very hard to do something this week but have not been able to achieve it. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We bring to you today our family and our friends and ask for your blessing on them, wherever they are and whatever they need. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We bring to you today our own concerns, our hopes and fears, our plans and problems, and in a silent moment, we tell you what they are and why they matter to us. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. Amen. As we come to the end of our time of worship together today, I say this prayer. Lift your hearts to heaven and receive the eternal gift of peace. Keep your feet on the ground and walk with those who need God's love. Rejoice this day. You are loved by God. You are held by God. You are blessed by God. 
today and forevermore. The blessing of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you. Receive gladly God's blessing and let it spill over into the lives of those you meet. Amen.